This episode of Texilla is brought to you by Gazelle. We got this email from Yves, who writes in, I just switched back from OS X to Windows, ooh, and I can't get my second monitor color to match the main one. The second display is an AOC 203W, which I am aware is a bad display. However, back on my iMac, I would just launch the color calibration tool and match the colors by placing the samples between both screens. I've tried both Windows native calibration tool and NVIDIA settings, but I just can't get the colors to even remotely match. Any suggestions? Yves from Campo Grande, Brazil. Well, there are a couple things you can do. Uh, one, check the monitor's uh, controls, the picture controls in particular, and make sure they're all reset to default settings. If you've been mucking about in those controls before and you're trying to get the monitors to match, well, start over with fresh settings on both. Uh, you may also need to reset the graphic driver settings, too, in the control panels for your Windows box. Uh, also, it's a good idea to, once you have those displays reset, put up, put up a test pattern of some kind. I love the, uh, the online display test, or online monitor test Ooh, from the folks pretty. over at yeah, vanity.dk. This is actually running in a browser. I, I find this particular, this multiple color range scale, pretty useful. One, it gives you the grayscale at the very top, in addition to all the other color levels. And you can take a look at this. In particular, pay attention to uh, tweaking things like contrast and brightness to make sure you're seeing full detail, all of those squares on all of the colors that you see on the charts. And then select a medium color temperature, say one around 6,500 Kelvin or one maybe labeled medium to start with. And then using that grayscale at the top, compare those grayscale charts when adjusting the color temperature on both monitors to get them as close as you can eyeballing it, so to speak. However, for a more precise multi-monitor setup, you're gonna need a hardware color meter and some software to run it. Now, uh, a couple products out there, something like the M2 colorimeter, this one I actually picked up. You can get this online with PC-related software for about 300 bucks. And the folks over at SpectraCal also sell a package as well that's bundled with that or other colorimeters. Another one, too, would be the good folks at Datacolor, a classic spider-type puck device, too, which is uh, USB-based, and that would just sit on the front of the display. But more than that, it's actually the, uh, the software you use for actually driving both of these. Uh, you can either create custom color profiles or just simply verify that the grayscale setup on both monitors is identical or as close as it can be using the controls provided. Uh, better PC software tools will actually provide what they call ICC color profiles, be able to generate one for your setup and then apply that to both the monitors and that would give you a really good starting point. But ideally you'll want one that also, for the software side of things, incorporates a multi-monitor setup so that if you have two very different monitors, it allows you just to optimize both so that they're as close together as possible and to be accurate as well. And you know what? Uh, I would love to hear about your tips and tricks for taming a multi-monitor setup. Do email us at techzilla.com, techzilla at revision3.com, or tweet us at techzilla. Love the tweets. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and here's a question we got from Robbie. He writes, I've had many cameras over the years, but one problem I've, often, uh, I've had often is that if I record anything with lots of sound, a uh, metal concert, for example, the sound is completely ruined to where you can't hear anything but white noise. Is there a good camera out there that has a, is there a camera out there that has a good microphone? Signed hmm. Robbie in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Hmm. Yes, well the truth of the matter is that most on a camera camcorder mics are mostly designed to be functional without costing a lot. In short, they, they're barely adequate, as you probably realize. Uh, great for picking up conversation or sound next to the camera, but definitely not something you'll want to mic a concert with, for example. Uh, let's see, we've got the, where's the little mic guy in here? Um, if you're really interested in getting quality sound, you'll need an external microphone. In most consumer camcorders, it's supported through a 1 8 inch stereo mic input, like the one right here. Almost all camcorder makers sell accessory shotgun mics. If you already have a camera, try exploring that route first. However, the audio quality, while better than the built-in mic, can still vary. If you want real audio control, you'll need to pony up for an external mic adapter and a pro-level mic. Um, like, they take the XLR-level mics and convert them into a single 1 8 inch mic jack. If you already own or are looking to buy a pro-level camera with XLR connectors on the camera itself, um, in that case, you'll just need the mics and the XLR cables. Um, stores like B&H sell a pretty thorough line of microphones and mic adapters on their site. If you want stereo, you'll need to buy two mics. Some makers we like are Juiced Link XLR adapters and Rode microphones. Um, finally, another option is sticking with your current camera and buying a separate digital field audio recorder with or without onboard mics. The trick, of course, is getting an extra pair of hands helping you with everything. Or you can maybe strap it on to your side or something like that. I've seen people do some pretty ridiculous setups. And of course, you'll need to edit in the audio into your video when you're done with the whole shebang. 
Um, and if anyone has recommendations on XLR adapters and mic combos for Robbie, send them on in to Texilla at revision3.com. All right, there's more Texilla coming right up, but before we do that, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. It's pretty simple. You've got gadgets, gizmos, and games, and the guys at Gazelle, they want to buy them. Gazelle buys more than 200,000 types of electronics, movies, and games at fair prices. They pay fast, and in almost all cases, they'll pay for shipping. And if you're one of the more than 35 million people who want the upcoming iPhone 5, there's a good chance you'll need to sell an old one. But Gazelle's only buying 200,000 iPhone 4s. Yours will never be worth more than it is now. So you need to visit gazelle.com now to lock in your quote. It couldn't be simpler. Go to gazelle.com see how much your stuff is worth and get paid. 